certain mountains. I've always loved mountains as far back as I can remember. Obviously, as an infant um, on the edge of the eastern Himalayas where I was born and brought up and then the, a little further to the west uh, in northern India, a little later on, the mountains were there in the distance. I don't remember climbing them or uh, having any feelings about them, but maybe somehow they were imprinted on me. And for a while, when I came back to England, living in flat-ish country, you know, Oxford, Dorset, those sort of areas, they didn't affect me. But then we moved to the Lake District, to a very beautiful valley where Wordsworth had been brought up, Esthwaite Dale, near Lake Windermere. And from the age of 12 to 25, we lived there, and mountains were my background. I loved walking up them with a dog or without a dog, um, going up sometimes to mountain tarns to fish. And like Wordsworth, I had a, almost a passion for mountains. There was something elating about climbing and up and up and then looking back and seeing new vistas and views. And this was reinforced by going to a board, boarding school a few miles away in Yorkshire, different kind of mountains but equally majestic, West Riding of Yorkshire. And it was a school dedicated to mountains. Its songs and its um, social life were revolving round mountains, which were all round us and we were taught to run and walk and explore the mountains almost every day. So from there, and then later, um, a few years later, seven, eight years later, after university, went to the Himalayas and spent 15 months in a Himalayan village in Nepal. And of course, they're the most wonderful mountains in the world, uh, Annapurna 4 which was um, 26, 27,000 feet, just a few miles to the north. And we were on a ridge high above the flat Pokra Valley, 6,000 feet. So again, mountains. So what do they mean? Well, they mean um, to me the ability to rise up above the level of ordinary reality. Much of our time we can't see very far in any distance, although in the flat Finland where I live now, there are the great, wonderful wide skies. So you can see that way and you can see distances along the flat fens. But when you go up mountains, you start, the, the world starts to unroll in front of you. And that's a metaphor for what I try and do in my theoretical work, which is to rise above contemporary views and problems. Uh, as Einstein said, a problem won't be solved at the level which set it. So you have to rise above it and look down on it and get a wide view. So constantly through my thinking life, I've tried to extend my views, both in space, going to new civilization, new societies, traveling, and in time, going further and deeper back into history as an anthropologist, back to the earliest hunter-gatherer societies and as an anthropologist in space looking at all different kinds of civilization and society in the world. And that gives me an idea of the, the particular too, because then you can place the particular that you are investigating within a wider context. Many people get caught out by the fact that they understand the particular the detailed very well, but it's all skewed by the fact that they don't have a wide vista. And so mountain thinking and the joy of the struggle, step after step, and then stopping, turning, and seeing hills after hills after hills, and woods and forests and snow-peaked caps in the distance, that is one of the great delights for, for many human beings. And so wildness, mountains, and of course now the tragedy of the mountains as they become hotter and deforested and the snow melts. So the preservation 
of these wonderful natural objects. And I gather there are even some people who say that mountains have memories. Certainly they are filled with, for me, as they were for Wordsworth, with some kind of spirit, something beyond themselves. And so I worship, insofar as I worship anything at all, mountains.